inside the Gamecocks, the show. <laughs> Sometimes the show is laughing at you, man. This is good, man. Where's That's Shelly? Good. Where's oh. Shelly? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just flat. Built by the bar down Kobe. National Anthem, which we hope all of you uh, actually appreciate, is presented by our friends at Edward Jones, edwardjones.com. And Eric Ponder, who is a great Gamecock, who – uh, serves all of our financial futures, and he has served uh, on the southwest border and over in the Middle East as well. He's seen it all. He's he's seen it all. Well, we think he's seen it all. You never know in today's world. EdwardJones.com. You can call Eric at 864-862-2161. All wonder, right. Which, which one's worse, the southwest border or Afghanistan, I wonder? Shit, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. They're all they they don't. Let's not do that, Stephen. Let's just get the ball. Man. They're all they're all dry and brown, so they bear a similar resemblance to each other. All right. So so, so look here. Uh, the uh, it's out. The HBC episode is out. I I Pat and I were on the phone for a while this morning getting stuff. You know, well, you probably talked Pat. I, so yeah. we were working on things with y'all, and um, and I I was. I, I laughed a lot because uh, Coach Spurrier, I don't think while he looks older, he'll never age. Um, hat tip to you for asking, you know, putting him on the spot, man. You put yeah. him on the spot. Now, you called yourself out, but you did put him on the spot. So how did you feel like when you got done with that? I don't know if y'all have talked since then. How, uh, how did you I've, feel about it? I have not talked with him. I've talked with, uh, you know, Miss Spurrier, yeah. but not even, not even anything about that. Uh, yeah, I didn't feel anything. Um, I just I thought it would have been a good question at, at the right time, and you know he <laughs> he was definitely caught off guard for sure. And I think the main thing was you know Pat beforehand was like you know Steven said he's got a couple of questions, hard hitting questions for you at the end uh, or during the the thing or whatever, and he's like ah Steven Steven doesn't know how to do that he he doesn't know, he can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like I was like well all right well I guess we will we'll find out. <laughs> uh, by the way some juicy points of this conversation uh do have to do with atlanta in the sec championship game and uh you need to go listen or watch it is on the chief sports app steven was very open about uh about a lot of that All right, i'm gonna ask you a question i've never asked you this question you ready yeah and it's just because you brought it up in the uh in tailgate talks with coach spurrier you asked him how he felt after you got kicked off the team. What happened the day you got kicked off the team? Like from when you woke up, like take us, <laughs> take us through the timeline. What what happened that day? So I got a um, a call from I forgot who it was. I want to say it was either the team doctor or the secretary for uh, Eric Hyman, and uh, they're like, "Yeah, you need to go see Coach or uh, Mr. Hyman in his office or whatever." I was like, "Okay, whatever." Um, so I go in there, and he's like, "Yeah, you failed the um, alcohol test, so you know you violated the contract. You're no longer part of the the team." And I was like, "I can't tell you what I said because it was if I burned any bridges at South Carolina, it was it was Eric Hyman, 100. Um, percent I mean, to the point where they had to like." get security to get me out of there. Um, it was, it was that rambunctious, so to speak. Uh, so yeah. And I was like, you know, I was, you know, just going nuts and, uh, I went home and we threw a pretty big shindig that night and, uh, left the next morning. I knew about that. I knew yeah, about the party. The, the, went, yeah, I went, went back home to Tampa. I'm glad you brought this up because this is uh, some people around here make Eric Hyman into a deity. Because he was the AD when South Carolina was winning. Um, and I think he, as far as being a fundraiser and building facilities and kind of bringing the athletic department in the 21st century, it was fine. But matters of winning and losing and matters of dealing with players and personnel in general were not his strong suit. And you can ask anybody, not just me, ask anybody at Texas A&M. Right. And it was quite one thing when he was at in his fiefdom out at TCU, it was quite another here where I thought in this situation, including 
just baffled me. I mean, a lot of people don't even know this. And you could ask Mike Morgan. Ray Tanner was about to go to Texas A&M because of this guy. Some boosters and pre the president had to step in and save that. There would have been there goes your national championships in baseball. Right. Right. You know, uh, because of this di this guy. Uh, he leaked the story allegedly, and I'm going to say allegedly because I can't prove it, but the whole you recruited Bruce Ellington off the basketball team thing, how do you think – I mean, I, it, it, I, I just felt like he was kind of stuck in this thing where he was like an athletic director in some sense and a school marm in other aspects, like the school marm that would – rip you across the hand with the ruler and stuff right like some things that he should not have been involved with that if you're going to get kicked off the team that's up to coach spurrier you know one, and one, an alcohol 100%. test dude i mean that's any i mean that that's that's tough I, at, I didn't know i didn't know that was it yeah at, at 22 years old <laughs> it's like are you guys kidding me so i mean i had to do and i tell people all the time i'm probably the most drug tested person in ncaa history um, so when I was, when I was suspended for my junior, senior year, summer, that entire summer. So May, June, and July, um, they, they came to my house in Tampa and literally administered a drug test once a week, randomly <laughs> What for, for alcohol. Yeah. In Tampa? In Tampa. Like at your parents' house. Once a minute, my, uh, my grandfather was in a, uh, you know, he was in the ground. So that's one thing. Or no, he was actually in a in a home. He was a nursing home, so I stayed at his house. And uh, yeah, man, it was they had, they came to his house and administered a alcohol test once a week randomly the entire summer months. And uh, you know, obviously, past that, I graduated, which was you know a couple of the stipulations of the contract that I had with uh, the university and like the team doctors. And you know, once I got reinstated, um, all through fall camp. Not one drug test all throughout the first four games. No drug test. And then as soon as we lose to Auburn, they called me in and <laughs> asked for a drug test. And I was like, well, I mean, I thought that was done, but whatever. You know, I wasn't smoking anything. I, you know, that was our deal. Like after the games, I mean, we we partied either way. Yep. And so, yeah, got to fail that one. And Connor came in against Kentucky and, you know, obviously balled out. And then they called me in the next day. And that was the end of that. <laughs> Jeez. I, well, I – it just happened. It happened in such a hurry out of a, in the blink of an eye. And, you know, it sucks, but it is what it is. I, I, I to, to, to make everybody laugh a little bit because it's all over and you, you've, we, we've, we've moved on. But Coach Spurrier did kind of, he quipped you a little bit this morning when you, or uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago when you asked him that question. His, well, you, you did fail a test, didn't you? Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Yeah, he, he was he was thinking about it for a minute. He's like, hey, well, you know, you did fail the test after all at the end of the day. <laughs> he just, he, just, he found, found a nice out there. You he's know? Un, like, oh, he's unbeatable. Yeah. Yeah. He's just he, unbeatable. He really <laughs> is. He really <laughs> is. Let's just talk about some other things like Alabama or something. <laughs> yeah, you were 22 I mean, years old. You were, uh, I guess it's not like you were underage either. Yeah, exactly. I was 22 and had a freaking four year old kid at the time. I mean, right, right. that's yeah. called setting someone. And, and, and oh, and Eric Hyman didn't even think about your daughter, did she? Uh, I mean, yeah, was, he did he or she or because yeah, there was son. a she. I think your son, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry, Stephen. I thought, you oh, new daughter, new daughter. You yeah. have a new daughter. Okay. Yep. Uh, and and I, I think somebody's wife had a little bit to do with it too. And it certainly wasn't Coach Spurrier's wife. Uh, no, no. One, 1,000%. 1, 1,000%. 1, I mean, the whole thing with the. SEC like mandated uh, meeting or whatever that they came in that they had and you know that certain someone's wife was in the meeting room and you know I mean it was the whole time they kept saying it's like this is a closed door deal you guys say whatever you want and this was like when the whole Charlie Sheen episode was going on so I was like saying like tiger blood and I was just you know kind of I mean yeah it was Kyle Nunn's birthday so we were kind of kind of drunk a little bit and I was just you know just just kind of ripping the thing and they kept saying over and over again, this is a closed meeting. You guys get whatever you want. Get it off your chest. You guys say whatever you want. So I did, and it didn't go over that well. <laughs> uh, uh, well, so. you know, it's uh, it's all it, it's all worked out. I was telling somebody this morning who called me after they, they listened to it, and they're like, man, I, I can't believe Steven is so open about this, that, and the other. I'm like, look, dude, this hat. first of all, there's two sides of this. Number one, that's Garcia. He will be open, and he'll be honest. 
Um, number two, <laughs> we probably wouldn't laugh about it as much if the team ended the season like three and nine. Right. <laughs> But the football team did finish eleven and two, and so it just kind of absorbed itself into the story, you know. For Steven? sure, and uh, lost Marcus, lost Marcus Lattimore. And about Mark, yeah, two games later, like, too, so, I mean, so, so it's just kind of it is what it is. But the reality of it is, none of what came would have happened without you. And I know that you won't come out and say things like that, but we know it to be true because without you, there a lot of those big wins. It didn't happen. Um, and before we get to this, before we get to this team, yesterday was eleven days until Carolina plays football, and every single year. And I hope it never ends. I hope the fans continue to do this. On the eleventh day before the season, everybody honors Kenny McKinley. Yep. Um, and I, I got to know Kenny well. He, he man, he was funny, wasn't he, Stephen? Y'all, oh of course, God. y'all played together. I don't know that y'all get where you get that program gets where it gets without Kenny McKinley and some of the big plays that he made to help win games and you know oh oh five oh six oh oh seven oh eight Kenny best teammate you could possibly ever dream of absolutely absolutely I mean he he made everybody laugh he made everybody everybody better man like you know he was he was also you know a goofball but at the same time, man, he would he would work his ass off. Uh, he would get all these receivers better, and I think he learned that from, you know, seeing the success that Sidney Rice had, uh, yeah. seeing some of these other guys. And I mean, it it definitely helped gel the team because you know every, there's not one guy on that team that didn't want to hang out with Kenny and you know want to just listen to him laugh. I mean, just listen to him talk. I mean, he was just absolutely hysterical. Just, he didn't even try to be half the time, but some of the stuff he said, and then you know he would like do his little giggle or whatever, and we're just like, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> but uh. But, yeah, man, he was definitely a, a huge piece of glue in that locker room. He could play, man. I, no, I mean, obviously that, too. <laughs> I mean, he. I remember in 05, how quickly he turned into a wide receiver was really remarkable. I mean, he ran – his routes were crisp. Yep. He caught everything. Um, he, he he wore Jinkos, which was always funny to me. Um, <laughs> Good. I mean, that, I was, to, that was his style back then. Wasn't that, was, it? That, that, that was his style. I know that. He could make you miss in a phone booth too. Like that guy oh, yeah. had a lot of wiggle after he caught the ball. I remember at the Clemson game they won in 06. Yeah, Steven, you were I think a senior in high school that year. But I mean, he called a little out pattern and like made three guys miss. Didn't quite get in the end zone, but got a first down inside the one. So uh, yeah, that that comes to mind. He wore I, I know Kenny McKinley. I have I have a signed football from him around here somewhere. He worked for a friend of mine at his business, and so I got to know him a little bit. And good kid, man. The, the good day dude. he passed was very, very difficult. For sure. Yeah. It, to this day, it's still hard for Corey to talk about. You know, a lot of people forget that Corey was on that team with him out there in Denver. Corey Boyd. Oh wow. And uh, and um, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Corey was there. His wife was there. It was it was a it was a train wreck of a deal. But um, but anyways, uh, we we love Kenny, and and hopefully there'll be somebody just like number eleven who catches the football for him this year. Stephen, we're getting close. We're now ten days away, and then they'll kick off next week against Old Dominion. All right, so we got some uh, we got a little bit of news before we came on the show today um, that there are fourteen players from the University of South Carolina that are on the preseason watch list for the Reese's Senior Bowl, and uh, of those uh, of those fourteen, I, I think I what I count Phil. 11 of them are, are projected starters and projected is probably a term we can start to kind of move away from. These guys are going to start. Yeah. And then they got a bunch of other dudes. This, this Gamecock football team, Stephen, when they roll it out next week, could start 14, 15, even possibly 16 seniors or fifth-year seniors or six-year seniors when you include the offense, the defense, uh, the kicker, and the, and the punter and all that type of stuff. You know college football better than all of us. What does it tell you if of your 22 plus special teams, three or four, 24 starters, you, you roll out 15 seniors or super seniors? What does that generally tell you about a football team? I mean, it's, I can't tell you who we talked to yesterday uh, for uh, our next episode, but well, yeah, I, can. I mean, it's, <laughs> well, yeah, I won't, I won't do that. Um, I mean, I don't even know if I, I can either. That's, that's stupid, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's just, it's kind of like the, like that's just how he wants that locker room. And he wants the, the the loyalty is something that, you know, we haven't really seen in the landscape of college football. There is no such thing as, 
fifth and sixth year guys that stayed at a program. Um, you know, I think it's just a, it's a testament to those guys, the the Luke Dodies, the the Boogies. I mean, all these guys that have that have been in the the program for this long. And you know, I mean, it's it's definitely huge when you have that much experience in that locker room. Uh, it's going to help out the younger guys, I think, significantly. Um, so they have officially named publicly. I mean, he did tell Coach Coach Spurrier or Coach. Who's our head coach? Shane Beamer. Coach Beamer uh, did uh, mention yesterday that he, he kind of pulled Lenore to the side and, and said, you're the guy. We're going with you. Uh, his response, very Michael Rothish via 2010 versus Clemson in the College World Series. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, but now he's you've been named the starter. Do you remember – when you were named the start, different times, different areas. Coach Spurrier was your guy. You know, got a little bit of a different system now. I get it. But you're 10 days out. You're the starting quarterback. Uh, what What is resting on his shoulders right now? Uh, I mean, I think he's a very confident kid. Um, I'm, a, I'm a pretty confident guy as well. Uh, but, I mean, I remember going in the second half against Kentucky my redshirt year, and we ended up making that comeback and winning that game. And – I want to say it was like on a Tuesday or Wednesday that Coach Bear was like, yeah, we're going to name Garcia the starter. And, of course, we're playing against LSU, the defending national champions. So that was a little bit of a kind of a, a gut punch. But, I mean, that's – that's again, I, we've talked about it all the time. I mean, that's what you signed up for, you know. You signed up to play against these these big teams. You, play, you sign up to play college football. That's the nature of the beast. So, I mean, I think he's got a lot on his shoulders, and I think a lot of people are expecting a lot out of him, and, you know, rightfully so. Uh, but I mean, there's a lot of hype, man, and I hope he uses that to his advantage and he just remains confident. He doesn't get down and, you know, hopefully they can light this, uh, the scoreboard up this, you know, this coming Saturday or next Saturday. Yeah. As you pointed out a couple of weeks ago here on our program, would you say he can spin the what out of it? <laughs> Something. Spin the laces off of it. Spin the laces off of it. Yeah. He can spin the laces off of it. <laughs> uh, hey. yeah, go ahead. You played high school ball in Florida, uh, played a lot of seven on seven in Florida. Uh, I was just thinking about that 07 class. I was actually thinking about the first time I ever met you. I came to your high school 06 ish. Uh, I think we talked about Braveheart or history or something. It was, it was really good. But uh, <laughs> all right. So the receivers in that state, uh, they put out a lot of them. Now they're not the end all be all, but it seems like every year in recruiting, they have some special ones. They have special ones nobody knows about that emerge uh tell us about florida talent at wide receiver because carolina's got a transfer from florida state's probably going to start vandravius jacobs i've been talking him up uh is there a difference in in the high school uh receivers down there in that state and, and the skill talent in general it's it's hard to say um i don't know much about the high school talent in south carolina as far as sure. receivers go um for quarterbacks obviously you know, me and Perry have been running these camps for the last five or six or seven years, however long it's been. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, so that's so that definitely, you know, it's 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 different. But I can tell you with one hundred percent certainty the the speed and just the overall quickness of these high school kids is vastly different now than it was back when even I was playing. And I think a lot of that has to do with the kind of stuff that I'm doing, like the specialized training. You know, I've done I've done camps with Ace Sanders. He's down in Bradenton. I mean, the stuff that he's teaching is is insane. How, and how, these kids are comprehending it. So, uh, I mean, it's just it's it's a full year round sport for these guys, and they they do it all year round. And it's uh it's it's definitely fun for especially having a son who's a high school quarterback getting a chance to throw those guys. So, I mean, it's it's fun to watch, and you know, it's it's hard to beat a Florida receiver. Yeah, I put out a lot. It's, hey, where is Ace is a head coach in Bradenton now, right? What high school I, is it? I just found that out this morning because Ace is commenting on all these Instagram and Facebook posts. And I'm like, dude, like, is your phone freaking working? Or can you not respond to my text or my call? Or what's going on, dude? And then he finally texted me back this morning. He's like, my bad, man. I'm the head coach now. And it's got me just absolutely consumed. I think it was his actual word, consumed. So he's the coach at uh, – Is it Bradenton Bay High? No, it's Bayshore. Okay. Some Bayshore something, but it's out in Sarasota area. And oh, yeah, he said he's. He, I was like, yeah, are you going to make it to any of the games? Because we're trying to get him on the podcast as well. And 
you know, would love to do it in person because uh, it's it's hard to do remotely. But, uh, yeah, he said he's going to try to bring up a couple of his, you know, guys to get recruited up uh, up there. So try to oh. coordinate that with him. Well, that would be – that's a nice connection, JC, to have A. Sanders down somewhere in Florida as a head coach. You, you talk about all the talent that comes from down there. It's it should be a shoe in They should just automatically come to Carolina, every prospect he has. That's a heck of a player. You know his dad played at Florida State, too, Tracy. Tracy, uh, yeah. Tracy was a good Florida State. I remember the day he committed, G.A. Mangus calls me, and uh, apparently Junior was like, why are we taking this receiver? You know, blah, blah, he's not that big, and – Angus was like, ah, just stay the course, you know. We're gonna, we're he's gonna be pretty good. Lo and behold, that guy was <laughs> really good and electric kick returner. And I, I don't think the stadium's ever been louder than the time he re- the, the punt return against Georgia. Georgia, yeah, twenty-one nothing. That place was was shaking. So I, that's good. He Ace knows comes from a football family, knows football quite well. So I'm I'm happy for him. I think uh, in uh, the Sarasota area, the whole west coast of Florida is loaded with talent. Guys, for I mean, sure i think up you go f- too far north from tampa the big bend it kind of gets a little lean because there's not that many people that live there i don't know right. what exactly is there but uh from from north like zephyr hills on down it's like there's players i mean oh yeah Absolutely. highly underrated for so sure there, there's a guy like uh ace sanders a little bit like him on this team juju mcdowell he's back he's healthy uh, we've seen plenty of Juju. We know what he can do. We, I know you've seen plenty of him as well. He's a, he's a, he's a cool cat too. He's an interesting guy when you talk to him. What, what do you, what do you, what do you do with Juju McDowell? You got all these running backs. He's not an every down guy. What do, what do you do with a guy like that? What would you do with him? I mean, I think you probably would be behoove yourself to maybe keep him in the backfield and then motion him out, try to get him matched up with the linebacker or a safety or something like that to where, you know, he can kind of work the work the work the little shifty stuff, you know, kind of like, you know, what we did with Ace. We didn't use Ace a whole lot on on the offensive side of the ball. More he was, you know, more kick returner and special teams. But, you know, when we got a chance to go into five wide, um, or even four wide. I mean, we 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 found a way to get Ace the ball. That's that's what you gotta do. Get the guys that can do stuff with the ball in their hands, get them the ball. Doesn't have to be down the field. Hmm. Yeah. Well. Wait, hold on. He popped right back. Yeah, he's there. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just just give him the ball. It's 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 as Coach Spurs say, it's not rocket surgery. <laughs> it's not rocket. It's a good. It's a good point. It's it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a good point. Uh, yeah, I mentioned it, all this. Huh? It definitely helps. You know, it'll help with 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 Lenoris to have a guy like that to where you can throw him a little five yard, two yard little drag route or something. And he's kind of wide open, and let him take it the rest of the way. It's it's definitely a uh, QB's yeah. best friend, other than you know a Marcus Lattimore slash you know guy like that. Yeah, yeah. it's a uh, hey yeah. The, they mentioned Rocket. Shane mentioned Rocket was really good in pass protection. How 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 friendly is pass protection uh, when the running back does it for a quarterback? Because I know Marcus. That's probably one of the most underrated things about what Marcus did was he's a really good blocker. For sure, and uh, it's actually funny. I, a, a kid that I played with in uh, Montreal, my second year, um, Alan Cash, played at NC State, and uh, he posted something. He posted a video today uh, of him sacking me in that game in 07, I guess, or 08, whenever it was. And oh. uh, Brian Maddox actually missed the freaking block. So, yeah, it definitely helps. And Brian's probably going to be pissed off that I said that, but yeah. <laughs> It's, it's good to have a uh, it's good to have a guy when he when he knows who to pick up. Did that was that oh, that was oh nine. That was the opener up there, seven to three. Yep, that's right. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah, we won yeah. the game. Yep. Yeah, it was, it was ugly. I, I thought they were gonna blow him out. Tevin Taylor had a strip the first play, and I think Stephen either chunted in the end zone or got down close, and and they and then it was just back. It was weird. Next week yeah. they go Carolina goes to Georgia. They go up and down the field. Yep. Firing at the at 41 37. That was just a weird, weird year that year. The Spurrier years would do that though. Sometimes it'd be up, sometimes it'd be down. It's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. It, it, I know. Well, as as the season goes along, well, Stephen, just for everybody is one if they're wondering, uh, in addition to tailgate talks, he'll be in with us every week talking ball. And uh, and we'll we'll be looking back and looking forward at the game cocks and all that type of stuff. But we'll mix in a lot of stuff that happened during 
during your tenure um, <clears throat> in in Columbia, South Carolina. All right, um, just kind of quick, some general final thoughts here, and then we'll let you run. So one one of the things that I've been saying, I don't think this makes me some football genius, by the way, but um, I mentioned all those older guys earlier that are on the Reese's Senior Bowl watch list. A lot of them are on the defensive side. And then there's a lot of guys that aren't on that watch list that are going to start and play that are older. Seniors, fifth-year seniors, six-year seniors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how would you rate the, imp the importance and play of the defense early in the year with a redshirt freshman in Lenore Sellers? Uh, I, I feel – at this point in time, really confident saying there's going to be a freshman starting at left tackle in Josiah Thompson. Although he might be the best left tackle that ever comes through the program, uh, he's still young, Stephen. And they got a bunch of wide receivers. Dow Loggins even just said 10 minutes ago that hadn't seen a ton of separation there. It just feels like the offense has a chance, and they'll probably get there, but it just might take a little bit of time to get there. So they're going to have to lean on the defense to go to Lexington and, and have a chance to beat LSU at home and all those type things, at least in my opinion. What is your opinion on on on, on that and, and how much those guys should carry that weight through the first, say, 12 quarters of the season? Yeah, I mean, that's I think that's 100% right. Um, when you got a redshirt freshman guy and when you got an offense that's, you know, I guess their second year with uh, Dow Loggins, you know, offensive scheme, you know, I think it is going to be kind of crucial for that defense to kind of create some turnovers, kind of get, you know, some quick three and outs. Um you know, especially against teams that they should be doing that to. So, you know, that's it's, it's definitely a confidence booster. And, you know, after uh, what, what I kind of snuck in at Travian Robertson's uh, D-line meeting when I was up there a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, just seeing those guys and talking with them, I mean, you could, you could feel the intensity that that defensive line, that defensive front has. And I think that's just a, a credit to Coach, you know, Travian with – because, I mean, that's how he played, man. He was – he was – all in all the time, just completely intense. And I mean, that's, it's, they're going to rely heavily on that, on, on that defensive front. I think that's a good problem to have, you know, especially as, as how good and mature those guys are. Coach Travian. Yep. That's, I, I, it's hard to call him Coach Robinson. It's just, <laughs> this is a different, maybe a better version of T Rob. The, the last T Rob, yeah, it's an upgrade. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. This guy, this guy's, this guy's pretty good. I, I think we can all agree on that. For sure. All right. It's out. Uh, for those of you that haven't had a chance to watch or listen, if you pull up the Chief Sports app, you can watch it through Gamecocks Plus right there, and you can listen right there. There are still people that ask these questions. We talk about it three hours a day. <laughs> if you download the Chief Sports app, it is so easy. You can watch Tailgate Talks, and you can listen to Tailgate Talks, and – you can even contact these guys if you're interested in, uh, you know, maybe being a, a sponsor or something like that of the program or have another unique idea. Uh, you can contact us through the app and, and we can get you in touch and we'll, and we'll kind of go from there. Uh, but uh, the latest episode is out. It came out this morning with the HBC and it is uh, it is must see. I'll tell you that and must hear next week. We'll be getting ready for a ball game, man. Thank God. Yep. I'm done with all this talking season crap, you know? That's enough. That's enough. It's, I've had enough. It's exhausting. Yeah, I'm I'm coming up there on Thursday, so I'll be up there for the weekend. Yeah. Well, sweet. We got to get some things scheduled here in the future in season and when you're when you're in town anyway, so I'll get with you on all that. We'll get it, sure. we'll get it worked out. Beautiful. You're the man. Good Not stuff, really. man. I'm Thanks glad that uh, glad coach Spurrier answered the call. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> get back right, to being daddy. See you, yes, brother. Sir.